Hey everybody, this is Sharon Cruz Pensino with Arts for Horses Anything Smaller. As y'all know, I moved my business to my property here in Carryville. I'm located on County Road 173. But it's been a while since y'all heard from me and I figure, well, to give you a little bit of an update, I finally, after much tribulation, got the website up. So the website uh, it, the domain, uh, to, in order to find it on the um, online, you would type in herbshorses.com. And uh, currently, I have just regular blends, like Natural Beauty, Allergy, Sweet Itch Formula. A lot of people have really been needing the Sweet Itch recently for their horses because of all the midge flies. Um, so, I thought, well, let me give you a little update on what's going on um i recently had a horse that foundered on me on my own and she was very sore footed i mean she just was just tiptoeing 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 couldn't stand and you know i started thinking about well it could have been a bruised hoof uh it could have been from where she just had some trimming done so her toes could have been a little bit sensitive um it could have been from where she had been ridden over some rocks you know some stone bruising or it could have been laminitis. You know, I'm not a vet technician. I'm not a veterinarian. I'm just a lady who really likes using herbal remedies for myself, for my animals, uh, and for my family. Because God's word says all the leaves are tree are of the trees are for our healing. And I truly believe that these leaves are also for the animals He created. So, and I started thinking about well about laminitis and I said well you know, I've only owned horses for a few years been doing herbs for a whole lot longer than that though and you know it says that from one of the websites and from one of the places I've studied off on it says that the that the, the, the inflammation occurs in the laminae and I probably am not saying it right laminae and it causes the coffin bone to not be as tight and it starts to slot and, and because there's a lot of pain and inflammation but another thing about it is it says it's the toxin that the inflammation secrete so you think about it well toxin okay the toxins just like in humans we get a lot of toxin from our environment from what we eat the horses are the same way it could be from the type of hay they've had or it could be what's in the ground growing up into into their food supply. It could be in numerous things. Um, it could be a horse that's more susceptible to it. Well, there are herbs that can help. There are natural herbal remedies that can help that inflammation. That can help strengthen that that hoof wall. That can help um, actually help the body release those toxins through uh, by cleansing the glands and, and again it to be urinated out so you know, think about this you know here's your horse my horse just recently and so I gave her my blend the first day she when she came down with it I mean she wasn't just she was like tiptoeing 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 and I mean, poor, poor horse, its muscles start cramping up from her trying to stay off of feed. She was laying down a lot. And I, and I was also very concerned that she was going to stress colic from the amount of pain that she was feeling. So I blended up herbs for her. I had herbs that took and gave her relief for the pain. Instead of giving her synthetic butte, I gave her what's called natural butte. And the main natural butte herbs are meadow sweet turmeric, white willow bark, and devil claw. Now they also address the inflammation, swelling, heat, fever. But they also have, they can do other things as well. A lot of people don't realize that those herbs have other values to them. One, meadow sweet will help with the uh, digestive. Now another thing I added in to the blend I gave my horse, I gave her some buckwheat and celery seed, which would improve circulation down to the feet to get those herbs down into her feet quicker. Because I wanted healing, I wanted her to have relief from pain. And because she was stressing, 
from the amount of pain she was experiencing, I also put herbs in there that would naturally calm and relax her. Like Egyptian chamomile, which and blue vivina. Those are very natural herbs to help that will help relax a horse. And it also helps with where if they're st starting the stress from the amount of pain. Now, I also gave her herbs that would help with any muscle contraction from her constantly being, oh, oh, I got to stay off my feet. Oh, they hurt, they hurt, they hurt. Her muscles were cramping. So those same herbs that would help to keep the stomach calm and relax also help relax those muscles. Now, I also believe a lot of times in treating a horse from not just from the inside with herbs, but also on the outside. So, with this, I use my arnica tincture. Well, arnica tincture is wonderful for bruising, cramping, pain, inflammation, swelling. Trust me, when I got when I got bucked off my horse, I, I saturated my head, my shoulder, never bruised. Now, the places I missed, I missed my arm and my finger, which you can see I broke my finger in the process. Um, those turned black because I didn't put it. I didn't put it on there. So the blood platelets were able to, to collect and turn it in nasty brew. But trust me, the very next day when I started seeing I was bruising, I started applying the arnica tincture to remove the bruising. Well, to get back to my horse that was had showed up lame, I also applied it to her muscles, which helped her to relax. So, so here she has the herbs coming through her body. She had the herbs coming through her body, and then she had it on the exterior. So it was, it, she was getting an all-encompassing healing at one time. So the first day, like I said, she was like, oh, oh, I got to stay on my knee. Oh, it hurts. It hurts. And then the next day, she was like, oh, okay, I, I can maybe stand a little, you know. And by the second day, she was like, mm, okay. Four days later, she's like, hmm, okay, I can stand a little bit longer this foot. I'm going to shift a little bit over here. Seven days later, and it's like, hmm. Okay. Eating the hay. And so, within a seven-day period of time of giving her herbs, and doing an arnica tincture on the exterior, I also put some peppermint oil on her muscles as well. To bring some heat in there. So, but the right kind of heat. So, I mean, I'm no expert. I'm not an expert, but I do love herbs. I, I love what they how they do things more naturally. I like the fact that it doesn't have a lot of side effects. And you know, I was thinking about well, hmm, laminitis in horses. What about laminitis in people? You know, we're, we're taking a lot of toxins into our body. So I was thinking, okay, so all these toxins had to be addressed too. So I gave her herbs that would help remove those toxins. The same herbs that I would take if I was going to do a liver detox or a glandular cleanse for myself. So I gave her the same. I gave her some milk thistle. I gave her some cleaver, some dandelion. Um... These are all, and another thing I gave her was rose hip. Rose hip is a wonderful blood purger. It helps carry in the poison and toxins out of the blood. And the other, the other herbs carry them out of the out of your out of the joints, around the joints, fluids, and, and out of the glands. So within seven days, I had her to where she wasn't in a traumatic state. As she was the first day. So, like I said, my name is Sharon Cruz Bencina, and I have herbs for horses and anything smaller. Now, a lot of the same kind of conditions that affect horses, affects other animals, affects humans. Like, for example, arthritis. In humans, arthritis is the inflammation around the joints, and then when that inflammation occurs, a lot of people don't realize it. That soft tissue around that joint tears. So 
A very well-known herb that helps repair soft tissue is called Boswellia. For us Christian people, we really like that because Boswellia is the botany name for frankincense. So, when you add, now, now we're talking about, okay, when a horse has laminitis and, it, and it's affecting and it's causing that coffin bone to slide down with the, from the inflammation and the heat and the swelling and it causes the, the wall to come away from well there's soft tissue in there and there's also some heart, some stronger um cartilage and things of this nature and bone matter so the combination of boswellia with comfrey to address that now like i said i'm not a, i'm not a vet i'm not a vet technician I'm just a lady who loves using what God provided for his creation. And, you know, now I have my horse is happy. She is feeling 100% better. I'm happy to report she's 100% better. Soon. But I'm going to still give her a couple more days before I ride her. Because I want her to, to know I care about her care about and, and 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 we can convey that to our animals to our horses we don't have to just jump on them the minute they they don't go Ooh, you know we can give them a couple extra days it won't hurt to give them a couple extra days to, to ensure that they're going to be totally sound and um so just some thoughts there you know i named us a bunch of different herbs I do have 110 herbs that are not listed on the website individually at this time. And But if you do want something custom blended for your horse specific needs, please call me, text message me. Uh, I'm on Facebook. I have Herbs for Horses and Anything Smaller on Facebook. I do a lot with that. Um, so if you have a horse that has, say, a combination, because a lot of the herbs have dual purposes. So, say that you have a horse that has sweet itch. Well, sweet itch is where the midge flies, aka gnats, are biting on them and causing them much irritation. Some horses are more, are a lot more sensitive than others. Well, there's a blend of herbs that really that you can give internally. That one helps. There's natural antihistamine. It helps with the healing, the swelling, and the irritation. It brings peace to the horse's body. And there's also a liquid that I make up. I call it my Rain Rot Sweet Itch Juice that you can put on the exterior, which also soothes the exterior, exterior part of the horse or, the, or an animal. And it also repels. It helps repel them away from them so that they can heal. So please look me up. Like I said, the website is the web to the web address is herbs and that's e h e r b s h o r s e s dot com and or you can find us on Facebook and I will be happy to help you as much as I can. I do mail out. I use the Square Up Reader and PayPal to receive uh, funds for the herbs. Uh, I'm also open from 12 o'clock noon to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Um, I do that so that way I have the morning hours to be with my animals. I am also, I have a lot of goats. I do teach people how to milk goats and uh, how to make goat cheese. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I'd be happy to, to teach people. I love, I have a lot of fun with that. And so I really hope that you will come out and see me. Uh, I am located six miles out south of Bonifay on Hot County Highway 173, also known as Bethel Road, or six miles north of Vernon. You can also access me from the Carryville exit off of I-10. I'm six miles from the exit. So I'm like in the dead middle of an area called Five Points. So please give me a call. Text me. Come by and say hello. I'd love to talk to you. Hopefully I can help blend something up that will make your horse happy. Or if you want, just order what's 
some of my regular blends that I have up there on the website. Most of my blends are very reasonable. Um, and how I do my blends, I, I do not use any fillers. It's all 100% herbs. It can be in a concentrated powder form, which most of the stuff I get is anywhere from 4 to 1 ratio or 10 to 1. So that means it's very concentrated. Um, some of it is in actual flower form. So when it's like this, I'll grind it up for the blend. Now, I use, the way I blend it is I use a quarter cup of each of the herbs because it is so concentrated. A, a quarter cup is 12 servings. It's also considered 5,000 milligrams or 5 grams. So you're talking a pretty strong amount. Uh, if you want to equate it to something like in human form, it's a teaspoon is that of 10 500 milligram capsules. So you don't have to have a lot of bulk to be good. You need what's going to be concentrated put it in your own food that you feed your horse. I always recommend uh, it's anywhere from a teaspoon to three teaspoons to put it in the horse's food and wet it down. Because the minute you add water, you're releasing the chemical components in those herbs. And that helps the horse digest it. It helps, and most horses love them. I mean, um, if you only have your horse on strictly grain and on, on hay, then you can actually take the herbs, mix it up, a little bowl of a dash of water and the horse will normally eat it straight up um so i don't know what else to say right at this moment but i appreciate you letting me come into your home through the through this video i really do hope that you will come out here and and meet with me and talk with me i love people i love animals more uh nothing personal and my favorite conversation is also jesus i am Sold up for Jesus. May God bless you. May God give you happy trails. May He bless your animals. And then look forward to seeing and hearing from you.